So this is already an established uh, workflow of the radiography and endodontics. We all know various radiographs are taken at different stages of our cities, like first in the pre-operative stage, then the working length stage, then the cone fit radiograph, then obturation radiograph, and later a recall radiograph. So out of all, the first X-ray, which is this pre-operative, pre-operative radiograph is the most crucial one. In fact, it is so important that Till date, dentists are updating literature on it. So every dentist knows it and following it. But uh, where's the problem? So the problem is this. The problem comes here. Like most of the root canal failures are due to the misjudgment by the dentist before starting the treatment. Or rather say, uh, we have uh, taken, like what we have done, we have taken very casually the preoperative radiographs. We have taken them granted. So there are missed canals, there are missed roots, there's misjudged anatomy. So there are root canal failures. So today through this lecture here, I would like to light up the undervalued uh, pre-op radiograph and I will try my best to explain like what are the technical considerations to be taken to produce high quality radiograph? What would be the specialized prediction techniques from an endodontic point of view and how to interpret and what to see before you start a root canal? We will also see some clinical scenarios like VRF and C-shaped canals, and lastly, some limitations. So let's begin with this. Actually, I want to begin with this quote of Leonardo da Vinci, who said, learn how to see, and then realize that everything connects to everything else. And this fits well with our topic. So the first question, first question every clinician asks, like how to obtain a high quality radiograph, okay? how to obtain a radiograph which gives the maximum info, how to obtain a radiograph like we see in the case reports of uh, a reputed journals of PubMed and Scopus. So the answer is the first answer, the first thing. So the firstly, much depends on the source of X-rays. That is the type of X-ray machine. And that's why DC type of X-ray machine is highly recommended. See, the thing is, uh, in AC machine, no? AC machine uses AC current which continuously changes its direction and intensity. So the radiation which is produced by AC machine is the burst radiation. And the burst, radi burst radiation contains photons of average energies. Now DC machines, see DC machines here, DC machines have a constant steady power, a constant steady voltage with no change in the direction and intensity of the current. So it will always yield high energy photons and thereby produces high quality image. So the first technical consideration uh, to be taken is using a DC machine. The next technical consideration to, uh, to be taken to produce a high quality image is film holders and RBG positioners. So we saw in the starting, I'll just go back to the previous slide. We saw in the starting here, like there's a follow-up X-ray. And this follow-up X-ray we usually take after three months, six months, or a year after, maybe two years later. And then we compare it with the pre-operative X-ray. Okay. There's a follow-up X-ray, which gets compared with the pre-operative X-ray. So now you tell me if the follow-up X-ray and the pre-operative X-ray is not standardized, then they cannot be compared. So they need to be standardized. And for the standardization of these X-rays, we need to use film holders and RBG positioners. So this become very much, very much significant when it comes to the assessment of a periapical lesion healing. Sometimes you can say, I did a good root canal and after a year, you just take another X-ray and say, still the lesion is there. It is not healing well. It has partially healed. So you can't you can't comment on that healing if you haven't if you haven't used that RBG positioner if you haven't used a flimp holder. So that means you cannot predict the success and the failure of RCT in periapical pathology cases if you haven't used flimp holders and positioners. So the next question which comes like how to obtain a geometrical accuracy of the tooth on radiograph, like how to manage to take exact X-rays with no shortening and no elongation. So the answer actually, it's very much well established. Like we need to have a long cone paralleling technique uh, in which the tooth and the receptor, in which the tooth and the receptor is parallel to each other and the central ray, the X-ray beam should be perpendicular to the both. 
so for to uh, to basically to achieve this technique we knew, we need to have flim holders so flim holders are must but the problem comes here in the maxillary posterior region you can see the superimposition of zygomatic arch here and you and here also we can't uh, make out the root the palatal root okay so what happens see in daily clinical practice we just place our rvg sensor right behind the tooth and shoot it mandibular posterior region anatomy makes this near to paralleling due to its anatomy but the problem comes up with the maxillary posterior teeth where the close adaptation of sensor to the teeth creates the superimposition of the zygomatic arch so what to do see we can't use flim holders in this area sometimes because that that because the sensor has to be placed very deep and sensor has to be placed uh, uh, very far from the tooth so it's very difficult to place uh, a rin xcp holder in this kind of area so we need to modify our technique we need to place a cotton roll here so when we place a cotton roll at the inferior at the inferior region of the receptor this makes the arrangement somewhat parallel and this decreases the vertical angulation as well see the vertical angulation see this decreases the vertical angulation as well so now you can see there's there's the same x ray now you can see there's no superimposition now you can see there's no superimposition here and you can make out where the root is partially you can make out ideally you need to you need, you need to use uh, flim holders but if the flim holders are not available uh you need to make the arrangement parallel so a frequent question comes like how many x rays should i take before root canal treatment so like there's no as such set rule like you need to take only 2 x ray or a 3 x ray although it is recommended that for a multi rooted tooth you need to take one paralleling one mesial one distal and one bite wing to assess the restorability see it's your case ultimately it's your patient and you need to diagnose him correctly you need to treat him correctly so in my opinion you can take n number of x rays since there would never be a radiation danger with the intraoral radiograph especially with the digital radiography um like a fun fact like flying from la to new york has 20 times more of radiation exposure than a dental x ray we almost consume more of cosmic radiation daily than a dental x ray so you need you can have n number of radiographs but uh these four radiographs you you need to have these four radiographs first paralleling mesial distal and the bite wing so what is an ideal pre operative uh, radiograph so before starting actually you need to see whether this image is even worth interpreting or not see if you can make the difference between the two at least between the two radio densities here like enamel dentin and the restoration here are there are three radio densities in this radiograph you need to make the difference between the these three if the if there is a if you can make the difference between these three radio densities if you can see uh, like the 2 to 3 mm of periapical area if if you can see all the roots if there is no overlapping if there is no blur then you are good to go then you can interpret the radiograph so this particular word approach how to approach a preoperative radiograph this particular word approach is very very significant this particular word only is very significant the approach we don't approach the radiograph basically we just look the radiograph and we just start the treatment plan we we need to have a approach to see the the to see the preoperative radiographs see see the see both the x rays the problem here is when we look at any image our eyes always go to the bigger things first like caries or a periapical lesion here and the moment we see these type of things now we start formulating the treatment plan and because of this uh, we miss the more significant minor details and end up doing iatrogenic error or missed canals or missed roots or even a case in which rct is not indicated or vital pulp therapy could have been indicated so um what you what you have to follow you have to follow a approach you have to follow a road map a road map is like first you have to analyze the crown then the pulpal system then the root outlines then the periapical region then the anatomical structures then the surrounding bone and lastly the difficulty assessment see this takes time this approach takes times but this won't let you to miss the details 
So what to look before we begin? Roadmap is established. Now it comes to what to look. See, first, in the crown, you need to look for enamel dentin. Okay, it's fine. Enamel dentin is easy. Secondary, uh, if existing restoration is there, then you need to look for secondary caries. And whenever you're looking for secondary caries, you need to look for the adjacent pulp horn. This is very important. This distance from the secondary caries and the pulp horn is very significant. The moment you see secondary caries, it doesn't imply that you have to do the root canal of the tooth. You need to you need to check the remaining dentin thickness. If if the remaining dentin thickness is still is still acceptable, then you can go for the vital pulp therapies. So uh, in this way, we can basically we can formulate a better treatment plan for the patient. We need to check the distance between secondary caries and pulp horn. Okay. So after the crown is done, then you then you need to go into the pulpal system, and the pulpal system begins with the pulp chamber. So in pulp chamber you need to look for two things. Firstly, the size of the pulp chamber and the pulpal stones. Now, why size of the pulp chamber? Because see, looking at the pulpal chamber, your agenda should be like, how access, how easy my access cavity would be. This should be your agenda in the mind. So if the pulp chamber is large, definitely you would be, it would be easier for us to locate the orifice. If it is very, it is very flattened, like in old, patients or in the adjacent to the fillings. So in these type of cases, there the access cavity preparation is very complex. Okay. So you need to uh, spend some time and uh, look for pulpal stones and size of the pulp chamber, especially when there, when there's a case of trauma, especially when there's a case of chronic caries, especially when the patient is old, especially when the old restoration is near the uh, near the chamber. See the restoration is near the chamber here and the pulp stone is formed. See here the old patient, the flattening of the pulp chamber. See a chronic caries, pulp stone is forming. So uh, you need to spend time in the pulp chamber.